Hello, very warm welcome to you to our daily service on this Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, of course, the first day of Lent. Lent, a season of self-reflection, an opportunity to acknowledge our sin and to respond with penitence as we prepare for Good Friday and Easter Sunday. We're going to begin with some words from the prophet Joel. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Loving Father, on this Ash Wednesday, and throughout this season of Lent, help us to take the opportunity in our hearts to turn from sin and to plead for your mercy. And may we, as a result, delight even more at the wonder of your grace and compassion in Christ. And we pray in his name. Amen. This week we're looking at Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm going to read again the opening words of that chapter. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. I was in the car listening to the radio a number of years ago and it was Gardner's question time and the panellists were asked one final question. If they could ask anyone to come to tea in their garden, who would they choose? And one of them said, I'd like God to come to tea with me in my garden. I've got some questions I'd like to ask him. Like why he invented green fly and, and what on earth moles are for. And then he commented, I think it would be quite entertaining. And I remember being very struck by that, because if we understand the Bible, one thing is very clear, that if we do have an encounter with God, the word that would be used to describe it would not be entertaining. And here in Isaiah chapter 6, the prophet Isaiah, at the moment of his call, has an encounter with the living God. It's not entertaining. He sees God in his glory, at least a glimpse of the glory of God. Holy, holy, holy. Pure, 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 clean, 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 awesome, awesome, awesome. And here in verse 5, we find Isaiah's response. Woe to me, I cried. I'm ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. It's so easy to compare ourselves to other people. And it doesn't take long to find someone who at least we feel is worse than us in their behaviour or their attitudes, and that makes us feel good about ourselves. And we can feel that even though we're not perfect, well, at least we're not like so-and-so or that other person. But here Isaiah is confronted with the perfection of God. And even if we might be, at least outwardly, more holy than some people, when we are confronted with the perfection of God, all of us realise, or at least should do, how very, very wretched and sinful we are. It's so easy to take for granted that we can, at least spiritually speaking, walk into the presence of God and approach him and call him our Father. And we should never take that for granted. And there's a way in which in some of our thinking, as someone's expressed it, we can end up thinking of the almighty God as almighty God, as if he's our mate. 
Oh yes, wonderfully, God does invite us to come into his presence. He allows us to call him Father, but that's not an easy thing. It's not a straightforward thing. Once we reflect on his awesome, blazing perfection, he's the God who is holy, holy, holy. And once we begin to get a sense of our terrible imperfection, we'll only really see ourselves as we truly are once we have a glimpse of God as he truly is. When I compare myself to others, I can feel I'm okay. Once I see perfect goodness, I know I fall a long, long way short. And so it's right during this time of Lent to remember the perfection of God. And as we see him exalted, any sense of self-exaltation should disappear and we should rather abase ourselves and recognise the awfulness of our sin. It's what we do in the Anglican tradition every Sunday. We say a prayer of confession so that we're reminded, actually day after day, that we fall a long way short. The Holy God should, as of rights, cast out of his presence wicked, sinful people like you and me. And we reflect on the perfection of God and our imperfection, our failings, our sinfulness, not so that we can cast ourselves down and stay there. No, wonderfully, once we recognise our sin and cry out for mercy, then God lifts us up. And that spirit of self-abasement with the help of the God, with, with the Holy, help of the Holy Spirit convicting us of our sin that will help us to be more amazed by the death of Jesus, which in a few weeks' time we'll celebrate and remember on Good Friday, and the resurrection of Christ, which means that spiritually we can be raised to, and yes, indeed, approach the awesome Holy God as our loving Father. Let's delight in it, but we'll only truly delight in that truth if we don't take it for granted. So we're going to have a moment now just of quietness as we reflect on God's holiness and our sin. And then we'll say together the words of King David from Psalm 51, written, of course, after he was confronted by the prophet Nathan with the horror of his sin. We say together, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Loving Father, we praise you for sending the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our only hope. You say in your word, the blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies from all sin. And we look to him and to him alone for cleansing. We praise you for forgiveness in Christ. Amen. We continue in prayer. Now a prayer for this season of Lent. Help us this Lent, O Lord, to know ourselves better and to give us strength to root out of our lives the unsuspected sins and the weak spots in our characters. Help us this Lent, O Lord, to cultivate self-mastery and give us self-control where we are most likely to succumb to temptation. 
Help us this Lent, O Lord, to practice self-denial, that we may be more ready to give of our time, our energy and our leisure in service to others. So may we come to the joyful season of Easter stronger and more faithful disciples of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Amen. And then together we pray the collect for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. God is holy and we are sinful. We've got no confidence in ourselves as we seek to approach him. No, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Do join in with the song. Yes, God is very holy, 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 and we are very sinful, 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 sinful. But God is also the God of amazing mercy, compassion and grace. Let's close by saying together once again the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.